Maybe you've forgotten, or if perhaps it didn't occur to you. I'll remind you. I, too, have a wooden replica of Senbon Zakura. And a Bankai! Senbon Zakura. Kageyoshi. Damn it. I always keep doing that, hoping some- Oh, wait, 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 no, no, here we go, here we go! Okay, cool, awesome, I have a Bonkai, awesome, that's great, alright. So, hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to the final episode of the Zompocto discussion series. This was a lot of fun, right? And I can't think of a better way to send it off than discussing the captain of the 6th division, Byaki Akuchki Zompocto, Senbon Zakura. A thousand cherry blossoms fall through the air, looking magnificent, sucking you in with their breathtaking beauty, but before they shred you like a freaking wheat thresher. Yeah! <laughs> oh, it's a great sword, and it's a great ability, and Biakia is a great character, you know? I'm really biakia would up right now. Uh, in preparation for this video, I went back and watched uh, Biakia's greatest hits, fighting against Renji, which is still my favorite Biakia fight. Even more so than Biakia versus Ichigo, I don't care, because the Biakia versus Renji fight, where we get to first see his Bankai, and he's got his theme in the background and everything, like, that scene just now at the beginning that's like my favorite moment from Biakia where he's fighting Renji and Renji has his Bankai and he's so confident like I'm gonna do this I'm actually gonna beat him and you have that moment where Biakia just kind of looks Renji right in the eye and he's just like you know I have a Bankai too right like I hope you didn't just forget that and then Renji his eyes just go wide as saucers and is like oh crap like I just, I know this isn't related to Biakia, it's more related to Renji, but did Renji forget that Biakia had his Bankai? Because maybe Renji was just so sucked up with like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn my Bankai and I'm gonna fight against the captain and I'm gonna save Rukia. And so he spent days training with Zabimaru, learning his Bankai. And then when he finally did it, he was like, awesome, now he won't be able to defeat me. Not realizing, you know, he has a Bankai too, Renji, like, okay. Uh, but then that just, that scene of just pure hopelessness made manifest in a millions of razor blades when he just, like, drops the sword and it just, like, scatters everywhere and Renji just gets swept up in it like a passing breeze of just damnation and he just drops and it's like, well... You tried. So that, that's my favorite, you know, moment with Byakia. Of course, his fight with Ichigo is really good. Even his fight with freaking uh, uh, Jean Karia in the Bount Arc was a cool scene. That was a cool scene because Byakia and Jean, they're fighting. Jean Karia had the ability to manipulate wind. Remember that? So it was just like he's using his tornadoes and stuff and the Senbon Zakra cherry blossom blades are dancing everywhere. And and there's a moment where, you know, Jean Karia is just like, you know, I'm going to shred us both or something. And Byakia is just like... You are insane. You know, just like in that deadpan way that he says everything's like, You're insane, dude. You know, so that was that was fun. Uh, his fight with Zomari was really good. That was also kind of kind of similar on the length the same lines of Renji, where Zomari's like, My resurrexio amor can control up to fifty objects at once. And Biakia, you can hear him laughing in the background. He just <laughs> Okay, alright, alright, I got a deadpan. It's like very well then. 50 objects at once. All right, um, Bongai. <laughs> and then he just shreds Zomari. And then there was that really good scene with him and Rukia. And he's like, I have my pride on the blade. And then, of course, uh, Byakia versus Tsukushima, which in the anime was like his swan song. It was one of the last fights in the series. I think actually his fight was the very last one right before Ichigo versus Ginjo himself. Um, and that was a good fight, too, because we got to see a little bit more of Senbon Zakura and that epic coup de gras where he just grabs like some of his blades and just shoves them right through freaking Tsukushima's chest cavity. A regular human cannot survive with a giant volleyball hole in their chest. I don't care what Fulbring you got, all right? So, you know, I like how Tsukushima, he survived a little bit after that, clutching his gaping chest wound, but okay, okay, Kubo, whatever. I guess it was poetic. All right. So, um, yes, his Shikai is Senbon Zakura, which just translates out to a thousand cherry blossoms. The 
kanji for this is actually really simple. You just have the kanji for thousand, then the kanji for book for some reason, and then the kanji for uh, cherry blossoms or sakura. So there you go, Senbon Sakura. Now with his Shikai, he doesn't really have any other abilities with it. Like he doesn't have any named techniques with his Shikai. It's just he doesn't really need to because his Shikai is so versatile. It's basically like, it's like Legos. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Byakuya's Shikai is like Legos. You know, give somebody a giant bin of Legos and they can build any number of things. That's the same basic premise. All right, so upon activating his Shikai, uh, Scatter Symbol Nzakura, uh, the blade glows pink in the anime and then it goes like and just breaks apart into a thousand different little tiny razor blades. When these razor blades uh, fly and they levitate, they catch the sunlight or the moonlight or whatever happens to be the case. In the anime, it doesn't matter what time of day it is. They're pink and glowing regardless. But anyway, they, they, they fly up and they catch the light so it resembles like falling cherry blossoms. This is something that the manga and the anime actually do something very different. In the anime, the uh, petals always grow bright pink. Like there's like an incandescent glow coming off of all of them at all times, which makes it, you know, really more visually pleasing to the eye, especially when he fights somebody at night because you see all these pink swirly like, you know, cloud attacking everybody. Makes it easier to see. In the manga, they're just colored white or gray or silver, which makes sense given the fact that they are just, you know, pieces of his sword that are just separated into little tiny fragments, like little razor blades. So it would make sense that they wouldn't be glowing pink in, in the manga, right? But, you know, it just makes it look, you know, cooler in the anime, so I'm fine with them doing that and everything. And plus, the name of the sword is, like, literally falling cherry blossoms, so it would make sense cherry blossoms are pink that they would do that in the anime. But yeah, just a little footnote there in the manga, they're not pink. Um... So, while in this form, he can mentally control the uh, cherry blossoms, he still has his uh, hilt and his guard. So, like, he has, like, a bladeless sword that he can kind of just swing around and, like, directs the uh, cherry blossom razors at his opponent. Um, you can think of any number of, like, usually, honestly, he doesn't even need to have a prolonged fight. Because when he's going up against, like, ra random hollows or just, like, random rabble rabble or whatever, he can just literally just do this, like, you know, chiri. Senbon Zakura. The blade separates. If the person does not know what's coming, they're screwed. They're just screwed right there. Because the blade just disappears into the wind. It just kind of like... Like his blade just vanishes. And they just stop and, you know, to, you know, what, what, what was that? What was going to... And they're dead before they even figure out what's happening. The blades have already passed through them. Byakuya is a very, he's a very poetic kind of guy. Makes sense. You know, he is nobility. He is the aristocracy of the Soul Society. So he likes tending his little bonsai gardens and some calligraphy sessions and flower arranging and all that stuff. So, you know, he's just like, all you can do is watch as the wind blows and your life fades away. You know, that kind of stuff, because it's just like as fast as the wind blows, you know, before you even have time to react, you've been shredded by a thousand razors that have just washed right over you, and your body just erupts in just a geyser of blood at once, and then you just drop. All right, now, if you do know it's coming, uh, there are a few ways to protect yourself. Like, Renji was fully aware of the Shikai ability, so it was actually revealed, like, when Byaki is in the middle of giving the release command, like, scatter, send bone Zakura, the blade glows a little bit before it actually separates, and if you manage to either hit the sword like Renji smacked it with Zabimaru before the, the release was finished and that didn't, um, that caused the blades to not scatter. Or like with Yoruichi, she took that cloth and wrapped the blade in it before he had a chance to finish the release command, then the blades won't separate either. So there's like a little bit of a grace period there where if you're going to attack him, if you're going to stop the just deluge of just death blades, that's when you're like one shot. You maybe got like a second or two before the blades actually separate from the blade. And if that's the case, then you might be able to survive a little bit longer. Not really like it matters because it's not like Byaki is only focused on his sword. He's also wicked fast. He's a flash step master. He's a keto master. He's got all the hottos and bakudos to like restrain you and attack you. So he could easily just restrain you with like Riku Jokoro and then walk up to your forehead and just be like, you know, Byakurai. Pfft! And then there you go, you're done that way too. But the sword is definitely a, a boost to that. Now, um, every time we see him use the Shikai for most of the series, he just uses it like that. He just scatters his blades, and it's just a deluge of just cherry blossom, just wash over your opponent, and then that's it. Um, if he requires a little bit more firepower, if the enemy is a little faster than he, you know, likes to deal with, he could always just release his Bankai. The Bankai, Senbon Zakura Kageyoshi, is essentially the same exact deal as the Shikai, just 
multiply to an insane level. We're talking hundreds of millions of blades here. The number, the exact number of his Bankai, it's never really been stated. Um, you know, it, it, it's said that whenever he goes into his Bankai and he drops his sword and all those, you know, uh, sword blades appear behind him, that's like there's a thousand of them there, and then they each separate into a thousand blades. So, Alexa, what's a thousand times a thousand? One thousand times one thousand is one million. Yeah, there we go. At least a million. It's at least a million. Like, it doesn't really matter. Like, do you really know an exact number for this? You know, just like, yes, Byaku, yes, Bankai. I can release exactly 3.63 million blades. Like, does it need to have an exact number? It's a sh ton of blades, all right? That's all you need to know. It's enough blades that you can basically just look up at the sky and see nothing but razor blades. That's all you need to know before you just, oh, yeah, that's quite a large number of blades. Tell me exactly how many blades are... <laughs> You're gonna be freaking meat jelly by the time you could even think about how many there are, so it doesn't matter, right? But that's how he mostly used it. During the last arc, during the uh, the Thousand Year Blood War arc, when he got just completely dis decimated by Asnote, and, you know, he got his Bankai stolen and everything, he went to the Soul Palace, he healed up, and then he came back, and then he realized, you know, he kind of mentioned during his second fight with Asnot, it didn't last very long because he wanted Rukia to really finish him off. Um, but he had a moment where he kind of defeated Asnot's little fear eyeball things and he's just like you know I really do have a pretty epic sword if I do say so myself I kind of had to step back to see how cool it was but going into his Shikai you know it's similar to Toshiro's where his Shikai and Bankai are pretty much the exact same effect just on a larger and smaller scale respectively so with his Shikai he's like you know I can do more than just separate the blades and have them just wash over the opponent I could separate my blades and and then I can form them into, like, constructs. And so he does that with Asna. He makes, like, the, the cherry blossoms create, like, spikes and, like, jab and stab all of the different, like, eyeballs that Asna created and stuff. And, like, destroy his little fear dome. So much so that Asna believed that it was actually his Bankai that was doing it. And Byakuya was just kind of like, no, you see, my entire blade did not vanish. This is merely Simbon Zakura. I got an upgrade. But Byakuya is not one for emotion and expression. So I don't think he's going to go on a dance of like, I learned better how to use my sheik. I, I am so much cooler than you, Biakia Kuchki. No, he's gotta, he's gotta dial that back a bit. He's just be like, no, this is just, the, this is merely my shikai symbol Zakura. But on the inside, you know, he's like, yeah, I'm awesome. So it's such a cool sword. I love you, Sambon Zakura. Let's go out to Denny's later, and then we'll get some ice cream. Oh, by the way, we get to see Sambon Zakura's true form, of course, during the Zanpakuto arc. And it's like a like a samurai, cool mask, you know, cherry blossom aesthetic, you know. And he has, like, the Bashonen appearance when you rip off the mask. We don't see that very often. But it's a cool design for Sambon Zakura. I would expect nothing else from that. So that, that was cool, right? Ha, <laughs> such a sweet sword. So, as I said previously, his Shikai doesn't really have any other abilities. You know, he can make constructs out of them, but really nothing named we've ever gotten. Now, his Bankai, on the other hand, this is where things both simultaneously get very poetic and very bloody. All right, so, you know, his Bankai is a vibrant display of 1,000 Cherry Blossoms or Senbon Zakura Kageyoshi. There's way more than 1,000 at this point, but, you know, that's why, that, that's what makes it vibrant, you know? That's what, pow, it pops. All right, so... You know, going along with the idea that watching cherry blossoms is a very, you know, it's like a thing you do in Japan. And in fact, they even have picnics where they'll all get around and watch all the cherry blossoms fall and, you know, sitting there and, you know, having a nice, you know, cup of sake or something and some snacks and just watching them fall. It's a beautiful scene, right? It's, it's scenery, right? So... All of his techniques in his Bankai reflect that just in really dark or really grisly ways. All right, watching like a, a beautiful scene unfold of death. So, when he first goes into his Bankai, it just summons, like, a crap ton of razor blades. And he can either control them once again with his mind, because he has no blade at this point. The entire sword disappears into the ground, and all of these other blades appear, and then they scatter into thousands upon thousands upon thousands of blades, right? So he can either control them with his mind, which means he can basically just stand still looking awesome while his blades are just going around attacking the enemy, or he can direct them with his hands. It's like, hoo -hoo, ha -ha, But he doesn't do that too much, because once again, Again, that's not as cool. You know, it's much cooler just to sit there with your arms crossed and just have this torrent of blades attacking your opponent, you know, grabbing you, throwing you back into it. You know, just like you're just sitting there like, mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, that's... I should probably wrap this up by dinner. 
Yeah, okay. So, if, if his opponent's really giving him a lot of trouble, though, or maybe he just wants to show off, uh, he has a, a set number of techniques in his Bankai. The first one he goes to is his Senkei, which just translates out to... And I love the name of this attack. It's so awesome. Is Slaughterscape. Or some translations have it as Murderscape. I'm like, isn't that so cool? That's awesome. Like, that needs to be the name of, like, a hard rock metal band or something. Slaughterscape. Here to rock your socks off. Okay. Like, that's cool, right? All right. So what that technique does is it takes all of these free-flowing, you know, razor blades and compresses them into katanas. All right, but there's so many razor blades, you get like a crap ton of katanas, and they all surround the opponent like a dome, right? So you can't really escape. It's supposed to give the impression that you're like trapped in this area, surrounded by Byakuya's blades. Now, when he uses this first technique against uh, Ichigo, Ichigo's kind of looking around, and I'm sure probably most people's first reaction upon seeing like, you know, thousands of these katanas just arranged in this giant dome. Um, and by the way, everything seems to just go dark when you're inside the dome dome because anime but your first thing is going to be like oh my god i'm dead because he can just have all of these blades just attack me at once and while he does have a technique that does do that he it seems like he doesn't like to use it it seems like nah even say even reassured ichigo he's like do not worry ichigo kurosaki this hell storm of a thousand blades will not descend upon you all at once. So instead, how he uses it is he can just put out his hand and he can summon any one of those katanas into his hand at any given time. So this is very handy. He can, like, summon a blade, go and clash with Ichigo, and while he's, like, you know, blade locked with Ichigo, he can summon another blade, run it through his foot, send another blade, you know, off to his side to stab him from the left or the, you know, the side or in the back or, you know, up through... <laughs> if he's really cruel, you know, from the bottom. Him, you know, he could just basically attack you from any direction. So it really just, it's his world. It's his dome space, you know, so he can like attack you from any angle and you can't escape. Um, he's even used this technique, I think, in one of the movies to block a Saro from a Gillion. Like a Gillion attacked him with a Saro and he used it as like a defensive wall barrier and it worked. So, you know, whatever. All right. It's just basically just compressing all of the blades into their own blades, which, you know, explosively um, increase their destructive power, I guess is uh, the way Byakuya explained it. But yeah, Senkei, Slaughterscape, that's... That's a pretty cool name for an attack, okay? And so also in extension with his Senkei, he's also got the technique Ika Senjinka, which is one bite, thousand cherry blossoms. And so this is the attack that he kind of like referenced to Ichigo where he's like, yeah, I could do this. I could have all of these blades just... <laughs> just, you know, you know, pierce the crap out of you and turn you into just a shredded voodoo doll if I really wanted to, um, like an Iron Maiden kind of technique, but I choose not to because that's just not my style. But when he was fighting against Gerard Valkyrie, this seemingly indestructible Stern Raider that kept reviving and, you know, the stakes were on the line right there, he busted it out. And so you had that awesome combination technique where uh, Toshiro froze him with that, like, four seasons freeze and and then, you know, he's frozen solid, and Byaki is like, all right, I'll, I'll deliver the finishing blow. I didn't get to do that much in this fight, but I'll deliver the finishing blow. Ika. Senj oh, no, it's an Ogi. Yeah, it's like, Senbon Zakura Kageyoshi Senke Ogi Ika Senjinka. And it's a... And then, boom! It just obliterates Gerard's head. Like, how much destructive force in one point. Um, it is stated that this is, like, Senbo and Zakura's strongest technique. Um, I mean, Shuke Hakutaken is also a contender for that, but I think just from in terms of, like, range and all the destructive power packed into its Bankai, literally, you know, being shot at one point and how it has bigger range, because Shuke Hakutaken is a really powerful sword, too. Shuke Hakutaken basically compresses all of his blades into just one sword with a pair of badass angel wings in the background. But, you know, if he misses with that one blade, you know, he's kind of screwed there. It's kind of just like, you know, one blade that way. So I would say Ika Senjinka is, you know, his true strongest move because it's just the opportunity to attack the opponent is opened up in so many different angles and ways you can do it. Um, and since he can mentally control each individual sword, I mean, that's that's a pretty cool power, right? So he also has Goke, which is Mosscape. Um, that just takes the kanji for throat and for, you know, scenery or 
view and puts them together and you get like staring into the maw of the snake or the predator and you are just a mere mouse or something you know so what this does is this is used against Zomari um, he takes uh, Senbon Zakura Kageyoshi and basically just creates a deaf sphere he like has just a swirling torrent of the blades around the opponent and then just all the blades just, you know, the, the ball keeps progressively getting smaller and smaller until it just shreds everything inside of it. He completely obliterated the building they were in with this technique, um, and he managed to actually, I think he created like a barrier to protect Ruki and Hanatsuro from it. Oh, that's something else and all important to mention here. So, Byakia has something called a Mushoken, which is like a hurtless area or a, a woundless space. We were kind of curious exactly how this worked, like if his blades just didn't cut him, and they can. They can still cut him, but there's an area around 85 centimeters in a perimeter around his body, wherever he's standing, and the blades of Sembon Zakura will not enter that space unless he wills it. So that's how Byakuya, you know, maintains, you know, safety while, you know, all these blades are swirling around him and everything and like that. The blades can still cut him, they just will not enter that space, but using his hand control, he can forcibly drag the blades into that space um, at risk of, you know, hurting himself. So it's kind of a very dangerous sword. Um, of course, as a member of the Kuchki clan, and his dad was uh, Sojun Kuchki, his grandfather was Ginrei Kuchki, you know, they've been captains of the Squad 6, you know, for, for you know, generations, for centuries. So I'm sure he had, like, the best of the best to really teach him how to master his sword. Um, but it probably took quite a while to really get to that point where he can really control the blades in such a way where, you know, he didn't have to worry about dragging them in and like shredding himself you know very very dangerous thing there and so his final technique that we get to see i already mentioned it was shuke haku taken which is enscape all right so we have slaughterscape we got mosscape and we got enscape and by the way really funny thing with the kanji for end it's one of my favorite kanji and the way you can remember it and this is how i did is because the kanji for winter is inside of the kanji for the end and so winter is at the end of the year it brings in the end of the year and everything like that so that's how i always remember how to you know you know see and spot the kanji for the end so there you go so you got that and then view which is you know just endscape white imperial blade makes sense given that this is what it looks like i think you can understand why white imperial blade works so it takes every single razor blade compresses them into just one sword that biakia wields kind of like a final technique he's only used it he's only used it once in the manga and that was the final attack against ichigo and he's like i will finish this with one attack ichigo kurosaki and ichigo's looking at this and he's just like oh man that's so impressive you know you got this you know white sword glowing you got these angel wings and this halo behind you and you look so damn cool. You know, even Ichigo had to admit that. Byakuya, man, you know, trying to kill your sister and everything, that's pretty messed up, but I like your style. But Ichigo's off to the side like, man, Zangetsu didn't teach me anything like that. I don't have anything super fancy. All I can do is just get to Gatensho. Byakuya's like, oh, don't worry. Maybe you'll learn another technique at some point. He's like, yeah. Yeah, maybe. And then he attacks. He did. He did learn other techniques. He learned Getsuga Jujisho and, and the Grand Ray Sero Getsuga that he used one time each. But, you know, yeah, that's something he got. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Ichigo and Byakuya clashed at the end of the Soul Society arc. And uh, it turned out that Ichigo's, at that moment, his spiritual pressure was stronger and his technique was better. We actually get to see the blade, like, cutting into Shuke Haku taken and just shredding right through it and then attacking Byakuya and Byakuya lost that fight so yeah um really a cool sword like I mean it's it turns into cherry blossoms that can damage you I mean I don't think I need to explain any more of how awesome that is and just all of the different awesome attack names and just the, just the build of it and everything and all the things you can make out of it you know it's kind of funny that Byaki didn't think to do it before the final arc he's like maybe I can take these blades and I can make them into shapes and things you know like I don't know like I could take my razor blades and make them into a giant axe and cut people with a giant axe made out of razor blades that used to be a sword. That would be cool. But yeah, you know, he could do, um, hey, Senbone, any fan of Naruto knows what Senbone are. There was those little needles that you get thrown at your opponent and everything. I mean, that would be cool if he can take those little razor blades and turn them into little needles and then just like chuck them at your opponent like and so maybe they wouldn't be they wouldn't be strong enough to like like sla you know like slice off an arm or anything but you know they could pierce the opponent like needles and just like ah you know and like numbed and things like that if you attack like certain pressure points so that'd be a cool way to utilize that ability right that that'd be pretty sweet um but when it, when you get to your bonkai i mean he's like 
I don't really need to be clever with this. I mean, I do have techniques in my Bonkai. I have the Goke and the Shuke Haku taken and the Senke and everything, but honestly, like, I'm literally controlling a tsunami of razor blades. I can just... And that'll deal with, like, 95% of the opponents I have to deal with on my everyday life as a captain, you know? Unless I'm going up against a Stern Ritter, or I'm going against, like, Ichigo, or somebody really, really strong, like a Vasto Lore or something. Man, I wish, uh, I wish Byakuya would have been there to fight in Karakura Town during the, la during the fake Karakura arc, you know? Like, that would have been cool. Like, yeah, he got to fight against Zomari and everything, but... You really don't give the appearance like he was really struggling in that fight. Yeah, Zomari kind of took him by surprise a few times, and he controlled his arms and his legs, and Byakuya just, like, sliced the tendons and everything, and R Rukia was there, so we had a really cool moment with Byakuya rescuing Rukia. Like, he didn't get a ch He didn't really... I mean, he kind of did during the Soul Society arc, because Gein was about to skewer her, and then he grabbed her there, but he kind of had, like, his redemption moment there. But that would have been also really cool if he would have fought against, like, Holly Bell or Baragon or somebody. Like, that would have been really cool to see, you know? Like... I'm sure uh, maybe somebody out there did a fanfic where they, like, rearranged the captains where instead of Kempachi, Mayori, Byaki, and Unohana going to Huecamundo, there was, like, other captains that went to Huecamundo and, like, Byaki and Kempachi and Mayori were at Fei Karakura to fight against the Espada. That that would have been cool. Um, but, yeah, that's that's it. We're done. Wow, that was... That was 13 weeks. Wow, I was actually really good at this. I was actually really good at getting a video out, like, every week. I think I might have missed, like, one week or two. But overall, I think I had a pretty good, uh, pretty good process there. Um, I, oh, by the way, yeah, in case you're curious, I, uh, probably noticed by now. But, yes, I am a Hufflepuff. I took the Pottermore quiz. This is the only scarf I had on standby. It's not as, not as glorious or as elegant as Biakia's scarf, but I, I think it works, you know? So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Next week... Uh, we will be starting a new discussion series, and it will be on uh, Black Clover. We'll be going through all of the different uh, Black Bulls in the guild, and I've um, gathered up. Actually, last night I was spending just like two or three hours just gathering up all the images, making the folders, making everything ready to go. Uh, so yeah, going on to Black Clover discussion series. And maybe, also, I want to address something before we go. Some people have come up to me and said, you know, oh, what are you going to do about all the other Shikai and the Zompoktos and stuff? Like, you know, what about Shinji and Roses? and Kensei's, the Visors, you know, we'll be handling those at a later date. Um, but for right now, I wanted to move on to a different discussion series, and I've never really talked about Black Clover before, so I'm really pumped to do that. So, uh, catch back here next time. Next week, we'll be discussing the first of the Black Bulls, uh, and that'll be, uh, actually, I already decided the order for this, like, months ago, honestly. We did it on a live stream. But, uh, the first, uh, Black Bull we'll be discussing is Magna Swing. So, get ready for that, and then, uh, after that, we'll, we'll see where that goes. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for still loving Bleach. And don't worry, I'll still be making Bleach content. You know, I still got some other Zompocto to cover periodically. Maybe not in, like, a discussion series, but periodically I'll just pop in and be like, hey, here's Kensei's sword. I'm like, okay, cool. All right. Hey, thanks, everybody. Tech Ig signing out.